Are the normal Republicans finally saying no to the crazy? Don't tease me now. This is not my party. Brought to you by The Bulwark. Republicans are going into the 2024 election with Donald Trump as their most likely nominee for president and with many members of Congress backing one of his most loyal insurrectionist lieutenants to be the House Speaker. Well, that's terrifying. But this week, finally, some Republicans showed some backbone. It's about damn time. Even still, it's important to step back and appreciate just how insane it is that Trump and Jordan control as much of the party as they do. It's a sad state of affairs. Let's compare to the Dems. There has been a lot of talk since the Hamas terror attack about how some on the far left have gone off the deep end. In fact, I talked about that just last week. But it's important to distinguish that group of campus activists and backbench Congress critters from what's happening in the Republican Party, where the craziest people are at the center of power. It's not like 200 Democrats want Elon Omar or Cori Bush to be House Speaker. For years, the respectable Republicans on cable news and in Congress have promised us that beneath the Trump show, there remains a normal, serious Republican party. I have my doubts. This week, that group was revealed. They do exist, but they're pretty small. 20 Republicans stood up to Jordan on the first ballot. What about everybody else? One by one, the most supposedly mainstream Republicans succumbed to Jim Jordan, the man whose committee was behind the infamous Kanye Elon Trump tweet. This is a man who was pressuring Mike Pence to go along with the Trump coup on January 6th, a man who falsely accused a 10-year-old rape victim of lying because he supports a ban on abortion in all cases and didn't want that position undermined. A man who is credibly accused by six wrestlers of covering up sexual assault during his time as their coach. I could go on. Dude is nuts. He's perfect. When pressed on how they could let someone this extreme become the second person in line to the presidency, these normal Republicans say shit like this. But his reputation has changed over time. He has become part of the solution, not part of the problem. He defied the congressional subpoena and he was trying to get Pence to overturn the electoral votes. But a lot of them did that. If I, if I held that grudge, I'd, I wouldn't have friends right, in the that's Republican too, conference. That's too. What happened? Did your balls drop off? Oh, poor Dan. You don't have any friends who oppose the effort to install Trump as an unelected dictator? What's a guy to do? Well, maybe Crenshaw and the other Republicans who know better, but succumbed to the MAGA crazy anyway, could have joined some of their colleagues this week and actually fought for their party. Teamwork makes the dream work. Because this week, we finally saw a hint of pushback as some members, like not my party favorite Don Bacon, held the line against Jordan and blocked him from becoming speaker, which is how we ended up here. We had a small group of folks who broke our rules and got rid of Kevin, and then a small group broke our rules and blocked Steve. Now they want us to follow the rules and support Jim, and I don't like that. Nice job, Bacon. Oh, Bacon. One of our two major parties is led by anti-democracy lunatics. Jim Jordan, who should have been nowhere near the speakership, got almost the entire GOP House's support to be second in line to the presidency. Thank God the Bacon Brigade held the line for now. But Jim Jordan, Matt Gaetz, and the rest are still cooking up a lot of crazy on the skillet. And as we saw, most Republican leaders are happy to eat it up. Yummy, yummy. We'll see you next week for more Not My Party. For more episodes of Not My Party, smash that subscribe button. And scan right here to subscribe on Snapchat, where you can get the episodes first and all the Not My Party content you desire.